Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. As you can see by the thumbnail, today we are working with alcohol ink on dry embossed aluminum foil panels. These are the little panels that I'll be making with you today and we're just going to go ahead and jump in. So I have these panels, I think there are eight or nine of them, and I have simply run them through my Big Shot machine in various embossing folders and they're just gorgeous and I used my rock paper scissors removable stickle, sticker label paper and just some kitchen foil super simple now I learned this technique from Birgit Koopsen it was last summer I believe during the Beyond Paper workshop that they had it was um, three different artists using things that were of course beyond cardstock paper which is what we're used to and it was such an amazing workshop and this was one of the techniques that really just stepped out in my mind and I really wanted to recreate it so this is my take on it so Birgit did it a little bit differently she actually had cardstock with the double-sided um, adhesive sheet and then the aluminum foil I didn't use cardstock at all I just have my label sheet and then I have the aluminum foil then I ran it through the big shot with the embossing folders and now here we are with the ink and you're seeing that I'm using pretty much simple three color analogous color patterns right or color combos so that wasn't necessarily on purpose I just kind of pulled a bunch of colors that were pleasing to my eye you know how um, Kathy Rack does the I think she calls it color plucking is that right? And she'll go to her Copics and she'll just pull random random Copic markers and she'll make it work. That's pretty much what I've done here. But it's interesting that I pulled things that were very, very friendly to each other. So if you do not have a color wheel, I encourage you to get one, especially if you tr struggle with color combos. So maybe you know what's pleasing to the eye, but you can't quite figure out why you like it or why it works when other people use it. And maybe you're doing something that, that doesn't quite work for, for your eye or for, for your palette or even just for your taste. I encourage you to get a color wheel. It'll make sense. So like I said, I'm just dropping the aluminum or the alcohol inks and I'm using little blender foams just to kind of move it around a little bit when it when it stops because it dries relatively quickly and then I also have my little spray bottle with alcohol just regular isopropyl alcohol and um, just trying to help it move a little bit and when I'm using my, my little foam pads like I am here it's really just to make sure that I get full coverage on my panel not so much to help with the blending because when I blend with that it really just blends right it doesn't have like the color gradient and things like that so this one got a little wild <laughs> when I added that purpley pink color kind of magenta um, yeah it kind of took over but I don't hate it I don't hate any of them and as I'm making them I'm thinking oh this is my favorite and then I start the next one oh no this is my <laughs> favorite I like them all for different reasons and all these embossing folders, I want to say I will try to list and link everything downstairs in the description box as well as with my inks. Now, to be honest, I have no idea what inks I use at this point. So if I can figure them out on screen, then I will. Otherwise, I will just do um, just a generic link to alcohol, mark, alcohol inks. But one thing that I learned through this process, because I'm learning as I go, right? I watch the tutorial and I'm just playing. One thing that I've learned in terms of like what my favorite ones are and my favorite, um, not necessarily even color palettes, but, but just my favorite panels, I'll just say that. They are the ones where I spent more time and I added more layers and more depth of color. Like this, this color palette, this is totally in my wheelhouse, right? Orange, pinks, yellows, corals, yeah, totally in my wheelhouse. But I feel like I blended it out too much, as you can see. But I come back in and I drop the inks in various places just to get some of that color gradient, which it works. And I love to see that process. You see how they kind of separate from each other. And the, the alcohol ink that I put down reactivates the alcohol ink that are already dry. It's a really cool process. I really love it. But when we get to my favorite, I'll show you. 
and I will tell you why. It's, again, like I was saying before I interrupted myself so rudely, <laughs> it's about the layers and the gradients of color. And yeah, it's just taking that time. And I feel like that's pretty much the same with, with everything that we do, right? We don't have to be perfectionists. You guys have heard me say a million times, you know, perfection is a fallacy. <laughs> it doesn't exist. And I know for some people that makes their skin crawl, like they want everything to be just right. And I want things to be right. Don't get me wrong. I want things to be right, but I also don't sweat it because when it becomes so stressful that you, you can't quit until everything is quote, just right until it's perfect, then to me, it was a waste of time because if I'm that invested and that involved, it was not healing to my soul. And for me, that's what art is all about, whether it's card making or something else. It's all about that peace, that mindfulness, that healing that I get when I'm in the craft room and then I'm making things. So let me just encourage you, if that perfectionist in you is causing you stress, is causing you anxiety, is causing you to not like being in the craft room or working on specific projects, set the project aside, redirect that perfectionist voice inside and just try to play. Just play. Don't have a goal in mind, whether it's, you know, playing with alcohol inks or just coloring or die cutting just for die cutting sake. So you have them ready. Um, just play for a little bit and try to quiet that perfectionist voice and see if, see if that doesn't maybe change your perspective or, or your outlook or, or maybe even just give you some joy and some peace while you're in the craft room. So this one, is my absolute favorite. So I start out slower on this one and I do lots of layers and I have, I think it's four browns and two greens. So very simple color palette, brown and green, but because I have so many different shades, it adds a lot of depth of color and the colors gradiate very nicely. And so there I'm using that alcohol spray. Now guys, let me say this, don't ever, spray the, um, what is it called? The alcohol ink fluid. I can't think what it's called, but don't spray that because that has like chemicals in it that can harm your lungs and you don't want to spray that. You don't want those little, those little particles in the air, but alcohol just straight up. Isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol is okay to spray. So I just used a little bit of it just to try to get those colors moving and it didn't really work so much. So here I am just adding layer after layer and it just creates this depth, right? It's still green, it's still brown, but there are yellow browns and red browns and kind of deep chocolatey browns. And then the same with my greens. And there's a yellow green, there's kind of a, a little bit of a blue green and then a real deep green. Maybe there are three greens, yeah. Or maybe it's just the way the colors gradiate as I've added them down there. I won't even lie to you at this point, but this one is my favorite for that reason. And here they all are. You can't see that kind of coffee colored one up at the top with the um, diamonds. But once I got them, I was about to take a photo and then I realized, oh, I need to work on this one a little bit more. And I actually worked on several of them. I just didn't show you. This was not perfectionist me. This was, I just wanted something a little bit different. So I added that kind of soft pinky coral and then I brought in this blue. And I feel like it just kind of took over like it did on the one in the top right. But I don't hate them. I think they're so fun. Look at them. Do you have a favorite? Do my process make sense? If you need more information on what I did or how I did it, Drop me a question downstairs and I can definitely give you the answers. Also, check out the workshop Beyond the Paper. Um, Birgit Koopson, Nat, oh gosh, I can't remember everybody, but I'll try to list it downstairs. I'll try to provide you a link to that as well because my understanding is that you can jump in anytime because it is recorded, so you didn't have to, to do it live, which was great to do it live. But yeah, so I'll link that. I'll list and link all of my products that I can find downstairs. And again, I ask you, do you have a favorite of these panels? Do any of these embossing folders look familiar to you? <laughs> have you had this, had this thought or heard of this, this technique before with the 
um, aluminum foil. I think it's so fun because remember, alcohol inks work best on non-porous surfaces. So of course, you know, aluminum foil is non-porous. Anyway, guys, I feel like I'm rambling at this point and I do apologize. Thank you for joining me for about 10 minutes-ish of alcohol ink on dry embossed aluminum foil panels and I can't wait to make these into cards. Just wanted to share my process with you today. Again, drop me comments downstairs. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and until next time, this is Nancy, the Handy Scandy, and I'm out.